Hello and welcome to this edition of my video series Agilado. My name is Ravi Verma and I am the Org Whisperer at Smooth Apps and a Scrum.org professional Scrum trainer. Today I want to talk to you about one of the five mandatory non-negotiable events of Scrum, the Sprint. The Sprint is the heartbeat of Scrum and if you are not using Sprints then you are not following Scrum. Many times uh, students and clients ask me what is the reason behind a sprint? What is the why of sprints? And I remember what I learned from Ken Schwaber, the co-creator of Scrum, when I attended my uh, professional Scrum Master training in Boston. One of the things that Ken taught us was that Scrum is a framework for risk management. And there are two elements of risk management. There is risk exposure and there's risk tolerance. Let's talk about risk exposure. What Ken taught us was that in many companies, we are delivering software, we're trying to deliver value in a complex adaptive system, which means the system is constantly changing and you cannot control the system. You cannot guarantee how the system is going to behave. All that you can do is to try and observe how the system is reacting and deliver value to the system, learn how the system is responding, and then try to figure out what is the gap between your desired outcome and your actual outcome, learn, course correct, and rinse and repeat. What Ken taught us was that there are three major sources of uncertainty in complex adaptive systems. This is based on the modified Stacy chart. So you have requirements uncertainty. Markets could be changing, regulations could be changing, or it's possible that we may have completely misunderstood customer needs. There's technology uncertainty. Despite your best intentions, it's possible that when you create an um, interdependent system, which is a mix of internal uh, components, internal products, and external third-party systems, it's possible that sometimes the technology will not behave the way you expected it to be. So it may blindside you, it may surprise you. And then there is people uncertainty. People might fall sick, they may go on big, uh, unexpected emergency leave, they may resign, go get a different job, they may win the lottery. Or as human beings, we may have misunderstandings because we are not robots. We don't behave the same way as we do, uh, you know, exactly the same way every single day. So now you have a very complex cocktail of uncertainty, requirements, technology, and human interactions. In this kind of a complex, uncertain system, you cannot predict what's going to happen over a period of time. So what Ken taught us was you cannot control the external environment, but what you can do is you can try and organize the way you respond to the environment. And one of the ways you organize yourself in a regular heartbeat is by using sprints. In my experience, usually by the third sprint, whenever I've introduced Scrum to an organization, usually by the third sprint, members of the Scrum team get into a cadence, they figure out how the sprint works, what needs to happen when to have an effective sprint, and even though the external world has not changed, they have not controlled the external world, the sprint allows them to organize more effectively in response to the external world. Another thing that happens is as the scrum team gets used to delivering shippable increments every 30 days or less, the rest of the organization starts organizing in response. So it's, it's a thing of beauty. Scrum may start inwards from you know, one concentric, one circle, which is kind of the epicenter, which is the scrum team. And then you start inviting stakeholders to sprint reviews. And in the beginning, maybe attendance is small. And then slowly I have seen, it's like a thing of beauty, the attendance increases as news about the scrum team radiates throughout the organization. And quite like passengers who organize their schedule in response to the schedule of a train or schedule of a flight, the rest of the organization starts adapting their behavior in response to the, the heartbeat or the cadence of the scrum team's sprint. Okay, So uh, these are a couple of things that I have personally observed when I've introduced scrum to an organization. Uh, the key takeaways I want you to have from this video, number one, what is uh, scrum? Scrum is a framework for risk 
management. Uh, risk management has risk tolerance and risk exposure. The reason we have risk exposure when delivering value in a complex adaptive system is because of requirements uncertainty, because of technology uncertainty, because of people uncertainty. And what I learned from Ken Schwaber is you cannot control or predict the external environment, but what you can do is be more effective in how you respond to the uncertainty in the external environment. And the sprint, which is the heartbeat of Scrum, is one way to be more effective in your response. In my next video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the risk tolerance and risk management aspect. Um, until then, I hope you found this useful. Thank you, keep calm and scrum on.